so nice to see everybody here tonight. Wow, thank you guys for showing up. Cool. I wasn't sure who I was going to be spending my Friday night with, but I'm so happy it's you now. Thank you so much, man. I really do appreciate it. It's been a little while since I did these solo shows. Man, I haven't had the jitters, you know? Gotta shake it off. What's up, little man? You good? Oh, we got some youngins here tonight. Okay. I will promise you I will try to be on my best behavior with the mouth. I promise. Uh, this is... Uh, well, as you can tell, this is not a big rock show anyway, so it's not going to get too crazy up here. But uh, I did want to just tell you that uh, for those of you who have no idea what this is about, this is what it's about. I'm going to sit here on a stool and play the guitar for you. I'm gonna try to play the hey, what's up? I didn't see you guys back there. That's a whole other layer of people. And, um, and I figured, you know, uh, how many people have seen this show before? Oh, so few, good. So most of you haven't. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I think what we're going to do tonight is uh, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of my life, tell you about some things that I endured from uh, the time I was little until <clears throat> here I am today, and uh, tell you about some of these songs, what they meant to me when I wrote them, and, um, and then maybe even turn the mic around to you guys and see if you have any good stories from me. Because I want to hear from my people tonight. I don't always get to do this for my fans, but tonight I'm on your clock, so we're going to get to know each other a little bit, okay? Um, but before we get started, I, uh, I want to just tell you a little bit about me for those of you who don't know yet. Um, I came from uh, the suburbs of Boston, Massachusetts in a town in a little town called Lawrence, Massachusetts. And uh, I'm so glad nobody applauded for that, because if you did, you, you weren't from Lawrence. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, listen, it was a very violent, rough neighborhood. I mean, you guys, I'm sure, have seen plenty of that in the New Jersey area, and you know what it's like to grow up in the ghettos and that kind of thing. And for me, it was, it was a struggle, you know, because we were raised very poor. I was raised on pretty much food stamps and powdered milk, literally. And, and, uh, you know, there was just a lot of crime and violence and drugs and things in the area that just a young kid shouldn't be subject to. And uh, my dad, you know, being a musician, uh, since I was born, I always got to watch him in the basement playing in these jazz bands and stuff like that. Um, he plays trumpet, still actually owns and plays for uh, one of the, uh, it's called the Northeast Italian Band. It's the, the bands that bring in like the... You know, they do all the Italian feasts that throw New England and they bring in the Saints and St. Alfio and they pin a doll up on the room and there. Yeah. And, uh, and then I found out, you know, through be rehabilitating my relationship with my dad that uh, my great uncle was a famous composer in Sicily in the early 1900s, which was my grandfather's brother. And so it was kind of cool to see how far music went back in my bloodline. Um, but, you know, and as I got older, I started to uh, get into more rock and roll bands when I was in my teens, like Aerosmith and Rush and Sabbath and Zeppelin. Yeah. And, um, and so those are the kind of bands that really kind of molded and shaped me for who I am today and the kind of music that I chose to play and write. Um, and then obviously, you know, fast forward into, uh, into uh, before the Godsmack days, um, I was playing drums my whole life and then I started that band and I just, I wasn't really convinced that uh, the kind of era we were coming out of was still a lot of those high, you know, singing high and all that from the 80s, which was <laughs> to me. And, <laughs> I wanted a, I wanted a bit more of a bite, more balls, more growl, you know, and I wanted a little bit more like a Metallica-ish style vocal. So I chose to take over the role, and I put down, after 25 years behind the drums, man, I put down the drums and stand in front of a microphone about shut myself. And, uh, and I was really, really bad, by the way. I mean, I remember the first time we did a demo. I think it was uh, some songs that you guys have never even heard yet. We used to be called The Scam. It was me and my bass player, Robbie, from Godsman. 
and a couple other guys, and uh, we recorded some songs. Now, I will tell you this, I swear to you, the first time I recorded, I was so bad at singing. I didn't have, I didn't know, you know, I was just trying. I didn't know, I've never been coached or anything. And my bass player walked right out of the studio. Like, he heard me sing and he just left. I seen him walk by the glass and the door shut, and I was like, wow. That wasn't even 15 minutes, it didn't even give me a chance. Just out, he was out. I'm like, I'm out, you should play the drums, you're way better at the drums. But, you know, whatever, I kept going and things got better and better. But. So, um, <laughs> and here I am now, still trying to figure this thing out. Um, and you know, and then so Godsmack was born, man. And, uh, and, and I will tell you this, I will tell you this, I, I'll get to music in a minute, I promise. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of history, stuff that I never get to talk to you guys about. And people try to ask me when I'm going from the stage to my tour bus and I never have time to give you a good long story. So here we are tonight, I'm going to talk your face off. But I will say this, uh, you know, it's a very glorified kind of uh, career, and I think people think it's a lot more than what it is, and uh, it's just like any other job, man. It has great days, and it has really, really bad days, and when you're a subject to being away from your family and friends and loved ones and children, uh, I remember our first tour lasted uh, almost three years. I never seen, I didn't see my bed for almost three years, uh, from the time we were signed until 9-11, actually. That's what slapped us in the face and made us go home um, and it was uh, a really crazy time for us because we got everything we wanted we all wanted to be signed we wanted to be in a rock band we wanted to make this a living and we get it and then the band blew up so quick we were just on the road so much we ended up writing the first record and the second record back to back and we just toured and toured and toured and uh, the fatigue and the fights and the grumpiness and you know you mix that with too much alcohol and then the fights start and then all of a sudden yeah. the band's this close to breaking up forever and uh, there, I remember there was times where we didn't even talk to each other I, there was at least a two week period where uh, I would just wait till the band took the stage before I even came out of the dressing room because we were just so not in a good place and uh, it was a very dark time for me and, and during those times I would sit in my dressing room a lot with an acoustic guitar like this and I would write songs and some of them didn't always come out so upbeat and happy um, but they were a reflection of that time and where I was in my life at that moment and so I want to play you one of those songs right now that was written during that period this is called Running 